Welcome back to This Week in Fantasy. We're all the way to the playoffs, and I'm joined for the first time ever by the number one seed, one Johnny Football. Please, Let's a- go! A.K.A. Weston, the Aggie. Weston, how's it going? It's going great, Wiley. It's awesome. Glad to be on the show. Excellent. So let's jump into the Game Center and talk about the final week of the regular season. We had Spencer defeating me with Jonathan Stewart sitting on my bench and getting 30. (laughs) We had Starry Knights defeating Cameron to end Cameron's season with five consecutive losses. He went from five and four and looking like he was going to make the playoffs to not even making the consolation bracket. Yeah, that's, that's a rough finish right there. And of course, that would mean that Lily wins the division. And Kareem Hunt is a bust, finishing at 500 after a loss to Clap for, who also won his division. And after we talk about these games, we're going to go back and talk about each team individually. So the new guy, Sam, finishes 8 and 6, but misses the playoffs. And No Fried, the defending champ, finishes 4 and 10. Disappointing year for him. Of course, David Johnson getting hurt was pretty much the nail in the coffin. Speaking of key players getting hurt, here we have C. Gouch, who had Aaron Rodgers and Le'Veon Bell, but finishes 4-10 and 10 as well. And then Ben, for one of the probably the first time ever, has the worst record in the league at 3-11, uh, and 11, despite the win there at the end. And then you beat Aaron. Aaron put up 91, but finishes 500, and you finish 12-2, and 2, best record in the league. Alrighty, so let's talk about each team individually since it's the end of the season. Yeah. Alrighty. <clears throat> well, let's just start from the top. Starry Knights, the division winner. Starry Knights. So she, <coughs> she has Dak, who's been okay. But Lily has always been someone who kind of has quarter... Like, she has a lot of quarterbacks. Mm. And this season she had Stafford to boot, so she had some depth there. To me, this team really gets solved and you really understand why she went nine and five when you see Mark Ingram. Historically Ingram was this kind of third down back grinded in guy that was in an offense where he didn't get a lot of touches but this season the pass first Saints offense had a two-headed monster Chimera and Ingram they're both rated top six this season in points and that was a huge question mark for Lily that I thought it was going to be a subpar pick, but it turned out to be one of the best all year. Yeah, I love Mark Ingram this year. The Saints ran the ball so much more than anybody thought. And uh, conversely, I kind of got the short end of that stick, taking Drew Brees pretty early on because they went from a total pass-first team to a team that you know, ran it so much to the point where that Kamara and Ingram were getting a lot of the touchdowns. So T- Todd Gurley is absolutely god tier. He was ranked number one pretty much all year. He had several games where he just went off and had over 20. What do you think about Gurley this year? Dude, I'm looking at his game by game stats, and it's just ridiculous. Like he w- he did he had a bad year last year. The offensive line for the Rams was kind of iffy, and so people doubted him this year. And they used him in the passing game so much more, and. The offensive line shaped up. And he was dropping 20, what seemed like every week. So, Gurley's been a huge addition to Starry's team. Yeah, I would say he's probably going to finish the season with over 260 points, which is a lot for a running back. Yeah. Kenny Stills, your boy. <laughs> he's a uh, boy. He's a, uh, you know. To me, Kenny Stills is one of these guys who's going to do nothing for five weeks and then catch two touchdowns. You're going to start him, and then he's going to do nothing again. Yeah. Sort of like Kenny Britt. If you, you know, a couple years ago, that was like Kenny Britt's MO. Or uh, Percy Harvin was like that, too. Kenny Stills is okay, but Adam Thielen is better than okay. He's sort of like that Percy Harvin archetype with a little bit more consistency. And he's on a Vikings team that looks very, very good with the... Case uh, Keenum. Yes, the Wiley Bulldog. Let's Case go. Keenum at the helm. So what do you think about Thielen? He's top 10 this year in rank. Yeah, I did not expect this at all. I mean, who did? But uh, the games I've watched Thielen, they target him so many times each game. And I'm just 
surprised at how quick and fast that dude is. He's had 15 to 20 several times and just pretty consistent. Yeah, and that's you have to consider too, the Vikings were a team with quarterback issues too, so the weeks that he did poorly, you have to remember it wasn't always the case, Keenan. Sure. Yeah, true. She has Kyle Rudolph, who you know, quietly has also been top ten. Tight ends have been absolutely horrific this year. You know, Gronk's been suspended, Gronk is, you know, gets hurt every year. Greg Olson pretty much had a season ending injury. I could go on and on, you know, Tyler Croft is a complete joke. Anyway, Kyle Rudolph has been solid, and I think it's been a big part of Lily's team as she hasn't really had to worry about tight end. Mm-hmm. No, Kyle Rudolph's been good, especially recently with touchdowns, and I see that he was seen in a walking boot. I don't know if that's going to affect Rudolph in the next game, but um, he may be in trouble for week one of the playoffs. That'll be interesting, especially because Lily, even though she's won a Super Bowl, I wouldn't consider her to be like a super playoff experienced owner. Yeah. So to me, remember that year she won, it was the Peyton, it was the year she had Peyton Manning and he was just 1v90 everyone, or I guess yeah. it would be like 1v11 in football. Yeah. Club, but but uh, anyway, Matthew Stafford, like I said, solid backup. Matt Forte, he's one of these guys, I think, that not a lot of people expected a lot from him, but he's sort of like one of these James White tier players where if something goes wrong, you have an injury, you can flex him, and it's not horrible, but it's not good. And maybe someone who had more value in a PPR league. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much on, on her bench. I wouldn't talk much about him. Maybe she subs in Deshaun Jackson for Kenneth Stills. I would think about doing that, but other than that, there's not much there. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson has been decent this year, but it's really been a product of Mike Evans having a really off year. Yeah, that's true. After being top two last year, Evans really hasn't been able to do much this season. <laughs> so overall, Lily, I would say the key factors of her team were to be Thielen and Ingram. And you also yeah. have to consider that Gurley was good going in, but people had David Johnson over him. People had yeah, DeMarco Murray over him. People had... Zeke, you know, despite yeah. the suspension. So Todd Gurley being not only number one, but absolutely God tier was a huge factor. Yeah. All right, moving down one in the standings, we have the new guys. Your new boy, guys. Sam. Sam. He had the highest point total this year. Let's figure out Poor why. Guy. Poor guy. Highest, highest point, point total. total. And he's playing the me. He's playing yeah. me in the consolation <laughs> bracket. You got to love that. Yeah. So Phil Rivers actually had a pretty good year. Only seven picks. Phil Rivers is one of these guys who would almost have Jay Cutler-like games sometimes. True. And this year he really got it together, even though San Diego started slow. Remember, Zeke was predicted to miss the first few games when the draft happened, but then he yep. came back and San Diego started slow and he had Zeke to help him along. So yep. hy hypothetically, Sam's team might have even been worse off if Zeke had to s start a suspension early. Yeah, true. Tevin Coleman was really good this year, especially when Devote, as I call him, was, was concussed. You know, he's devoted to being underwhelming, Wes. That's why I call <laughs> him Devote. Yeah. Devonta Freeman always just goes right under what you expect. I knew Col the Falcons have such good offense that you kind of knew that Coleman was going to be a threat and he was going to take some of the carries, but it was really, really like an even split, I would say. Especially once Freeman got hurt, it got a lot worse. Yeah. So Derek Henry. A lot of people are sort of looking at this guy as to the reason why that DeMarco Murray has been a little underwhelming, but why don't you shed some light on that? Ah. Uh. I really think they haven't used him like that much, but there's been like three games where he breaks off a huge run and they use him a little more in that game because of his big run, but I don't know, he's he has a lot of games of three, five, seven points, and then a couple big games, but I don't know if I would say that he contributed that much to Murray's low performance this year. So why do you think Murray had an off year then? I just don't think he's great back anymore. And he needs a really good offensive line, I think. But uh, doesn't quite have it in Tennessee. 
I think Keenan Allen has been a guy that's surprisingly good in the past. Yeah, he was Philip Rivers' main target, but Philip Rivers was so busy having horrible games that Keenan Allen, he was he was good, like high tier B, I would say. But this year, because of Phil Rivers really getting it together, Keenan Allen's all the way at rank three overall. Yeah, last year he tore his ACL, I believe, in week. 13 or 14 so coming into this year he was ranked pretty low compared to what he us- he's usually at and so people were doubting that he could come back and play well and it, I think it took him a little bit to get back into the swing of things with touchdowns but the last couple weeks he's dominated with over 100 yards looking at 170 160 two touchdowns just ridiculous towards the end of the season. So seeing that Sam has Philip Rivers and Keenan Allen, I want to get your thoughts on this discount double points phenomenon that, you know, Weston and, or not Weston, excuse me, Seagouch. Seagouch loves that. Seagouch loves it, and I think Jackson likes it. He doesn't like it as much as Seagouch, but yeah. what are your thoughts on this? Because I've always viewed it as sort of a weakness more than a strength. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll tell you a sad story, all right? Okay. I think it was 2013. I drafted Action Jay Cutler Ugh, why would and you? I had Jordy Nelson and so to pair off that Seagouch sent me a little trade and said I'll trade you um, who is it Alshon Jeffrey for Jordy Nelson so we can both have the discount double points and I was like ah, I don't know but for some reason that year I had Alshon Jeffrey ranked pretty high Jordy Nelson a little lower oh. so I didn't take into into account the quarterback or having the discount <laughs> double points and stupid me I took the trade and oh man I regretted it all season and I pretty much said I'm not doing that again with the discount double points it screwed me once and it's not happening again but Weston how much of that had to do with the fact that one <laughs> of the ends of that was Jay Cutler probably a lot of it so I mean if you get a top tier quarterback with Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady Philip Rivers in this case it worked out I think it, it's not a bad idea to, to get the top wide receiver for that quarterback. You know, I think one of the interesting things about discount and double points is the fact that a lot of these premier quarterbacks, you know, your Brady's, your Breeze's, they really spread the ball around so much where it's like they don't even have one specific guy that they really go to. I feel like everyone's trying to recapture the magic of Brady and Randy Moss in 2007 yeah. where it's like, well, like if you have the best receiver and the best quarterback, you're unstoppable. But the the top tier quarterbacks really spread the ball around a lot, you know. Yeah. Oh, I almost feel like the the days of like the Marvin Harrison type stud receiver. You know, you have Julio Jones, but and AJ Green. But other than that, it's like Megatron's gone, Ocho Cinco's yeah. gone. You know, Dez is a shell of what he once was. There's a lot less like premier big number one star receivers I feel like and it's interesting because those tier one star receivers usually have a subpar fantasy quarterback and you just it wouldn't be smart to pair those guys up yeah exactly alrighty so Mike Evans like we said had a down year this year he's at a hundred points flat ranked 26 you know it looks like he's more concerned about administering cheap shots than he is catching touchdowns yeah that was rough I, don't, I really don't know what happened to Mike Evans this year. I, it may be the just the whole team. The Buccaneers look like a dumpster fire. They really do. Like Jameis Winston looks very underwhelming, and then when he's been out, whoever the backup was, I can't even remember, looked like trash. So as a star receiver, you should, really should be able to overcome s- some quarterback problems, but the t- whole team has been really bad. Mm-hmm. We see that Gronky here, he's having his little suspension issue, but he's going to play. So, Gronk is Gronk. I don't even really think we need to talk about him. Yeah, no. Tyreek Kill was this uber-explosive receiver that had a lot of hype, but when the Chiefs dipped in the middle of the season, he sort of lost a lot of this acclaim that he was receiving. What are your thoughts on this guy? He's stupid fast. I mean, you look at that guy run, and nobody catches him. But... uh, he really only does anything when he scores a touchdown. You can see one game where he had 185 yards, but the rest of the time, he's pretty touchdown dependent. And the Chiefs haven't been scoring touchdowns throughout the middle of the season. So he pretty much goes as Alex Smith goes with the touchdowns. Marcus Mariota, 
ranked 22 despite the fact that he can run. What a horrible, horrible quarterback. Horrible. And then we have Zeke, of course. Zeke, you know, big deal going in. His value was being questioned because a lot of people believed he didn't really do anything wrong, but the NFL clearly had an axe to grind. Ultimately, he had to serve the full six, and it came near the end of the year. So what do you think about Zeke this year, and how do you think he's going to do next year? Going into the draft, I kind of just said, like, I don't really want to touch Zeke because it's going to be up in the air all season. We're going to hear about it all season. We're not going to know when he's suspended, and it could be during the playoffs because they could uh, suspend it and wait for it to happen later on in the season. And so I didn't want to touch him. Sam kind of took him early, I thought. Second early, round, yeah. Yeah, earlier than I would have touched him for sure. But, he, I mean, Zeke is Zeke, and look at his stats. When he's playing, he's number three, top three running back in the league. But, um Hey, yeah. do you remember when the Cowboys got steamrolled by Denver in week two? Everyone was like, oh, I Denver is so good. The Denver defense. And actually, Denver was awful and, like, Zeke could just quit on his team. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, like, looking that was back bad. now, like, Denver's lost pretty much every game since then. And I remember at the time, everyone was just like, oh, yeah, Denver's going to go to the playoffs. Like, look how good their defense is. Yeah, we caught Denver at Denver, which is always a t- really tough place to play, but it was early on in the season. The quarterback still had some confidence. Mm-hmm. And Simeon he was just, running all over us. Uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. I think <laughs> he needed a couple t- games on the road to get beat up and then have his confidence shot, and then he's been terrible the rest of the season. <laughs> all right, so what are your thoughts on the Saxonville defense? Because they've had a few insane weeks, but they also have had some disappointing weeks. <sighs> They've played, I think, a pretty weak schedule. Yeah, I mean, look at look at the weeks they have good games. Beat the shit out of Houston when they were doing the. It's gonna be Tom Savage. <laughs> it's gonna. I know we drafted Watson and Savage, but it's gonna be Tom Savage. He's gotta yeah. earn his spot, Weston. He's gotta earn his <laughs> spot. Yeah, they got their shit pushed in by Tennessee, who's bad. They had yeah. bad weeks against both LA teams that don't, that I would say have like average or little above average offenses. You know, they they beat the crap out of Cleveland. They, you know, had decent weeks against Indy and Arizona. You know, Indy again. These teams are garbage. In fact, yeah. these teams are garbage without their best asset. Indy, no luck. Arizona, no Johnson. Yep. So I think even though they're ranked number one, they're still a little overrated, still a little gassed. And if, you have, if you're having to depend on them in the playoffs, they're still facing terrible Houston. San Francisco maybe Jimmy G may be the real deal, but we'll see about that. Yeah, it is interesting that there's, the AFC South is so horrific that they played this week of a schedule, and it's actually going to keep going. It's not yeah. like they have to finish the year with the Pats, you know. Yeah. So, Sam, I think this is sort of like a hard luck team. Obviously, he had the most points, but that's kind of how fantasy football go. I mean, I beat him once. I'm looking to beat him again, hopefully. So, Yeah. All right, and we're going to spend less time on the shitty team so this thing doesn't run an hour long. Cool. Okay, to Jackson's team. Who was 500? He had Russell my Jimmy's Wilson, who reeled off lots of rush yards to secure him the rank one spot. What do you think about Wilson, who's already at 300 points? This dude's a magician. I see him roll out, and honestly, sometimes when I watch him, I'm like, dang, that's what Johnny Football looked like when he was at A&M. And he's doing this in the pros, and I just wish I could see that again at A&M. But, you know, past is the past. But Russell Wilson. Or from Johnny Football. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Russell Wilson is the best quarterback in the league right now, and Seahawks are going to make some hay in the playoffs, so we'll see about that. Best quarterback fantasy wise or real life? Without Rodgers playing, I think he's the best quarterback right now in the league. Oh, you mean NFC, right? Have you forgotten that Tom Brady exists, the best quarterback <sighs> of all time? I agree, he is the GOAT, but he's also 40 years old, and I think he's got an injury that's plaguing him right now. They're not very public about it, but I've heard rumors that he's got something wrong with his either his back or his leg or something that might be a problem into the playoffs. I think he just had a rough week, honestly, yeah. because like it was like uh, 
was it week one where they got like pummeled by the Steelers? The Chiefs. Or, yeah, the Chiefs. The Chiefs. And everyone, mm -hmm. was, everyone was saying like, yeah, you know, uh, Tom Brady's not very good and like he's fallen off and he's 40. I think it was just a one-off bad week. Yeah. It's hard to write him off for sure. But I, I think that Wilson is an incredibly good fantasy quarterback. I think that Rodgers and Brady are both better in real life. Yeah. So Marshawn Lynch, everyone gave him a lot of credit going into the year, and he has had a ton of really, really awful weeks. But he re recently, I would say, he's had a lot of good weeks, 18 against Miami, 17 at Denver, you know, and he's playing yeah. Dallas's defense next week. They're going to have Sean Lee, so I don't expect him to do great, but what do you think of Lynch this year? Surprising. I did not expect this at all. Um to come after what did he sit out two years and then come back yeah he pretty much rage quit after uh pete carroll threw away a super bowl ring quite literally yeah he's been fun to watch those those early weeks on the sideline where they're jamming like the oakland music and he's just like bobbing his hair back and forth going crazy he's he's a fun player to watch and has had a good end of the season oakland music huh weston <laughs> yeah man <laughs> you didn't see that no, I, I guess not. Like I see, oh, I saw that one time where he tried to like escort the other player out after he got ejected. <laughs> no, that was great. That was great. So, what do you think about Kareem Hunt? Because Seagouch was high on this guy, and of course he had like the forty-point freaking week one. But yeah. so is Kareem Hunt the real deal? Like, what do you think? All right, Matthew Berry is my dude from ESPN, and so this was his ride or die guy, and so. When he talked him up real big, I researched him, looked him up, and was like, I got to have this guy. Couldn't get him in this league. But after the first three weeks, I was killing myself for not drafting him earlier. But I think since the Andy Reid gave up his play calling duties and the Chiefs looked a lot better last week, and I think they're going to try to get him the ball more because it seemed like earlier on or like midseason – they just wouldn't give him the ball. They'd give him the ball a couple times and just be like, he didn't get it going the first couple carries. Let's go away from him and try to dink and dunk. And I just don't like the Chiefs offense when they do that. So I think he is the real deal. All right. Julio Jones, widely considered one of the best. And you know what? He's pretty damn good. He's still top 10. And Julio is one of these guys who can have these insane weeks. Against Tampa Bay, he almost put up 40. <clears throat> Yeah. He, he This year it's been strange, though. He's been more of like a boomer bust kind of player, and he's never been that type of player. Because he's had several, like, three, six, seven, five, seven, two. And that's never been Julio, and I think it's just the inconsistent play from Matt Ryan. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Larry Fitzgerald has been quietly catching a ton of balls for, like, the last 15 years. He's top 15 this year. And he has lots of consistency in an offense that's an absolute joke and lacks its best weapon. Yeah. I love watching that dude. He's just the super consistent pro that you like to root for. Evan Ingram is a tight end on a terrible offense. Thankfully for him, Eli's back. He doesn't have Geno Smith throwing to him. But, you know, Evan Ingram, to me, he's good in the sense that there are no good tight ends. Like, yeah. when you take away Olsen and Gronk's always hurt, Tyler Croft is shit, like, I could go on and on and on. Like, yeah, he's pretty good. But, you know, when I think, when I compare him to someone like Witten, fantasy-wise, he's better. But, you know, in real life, he doesn't bring near as much to the table as someone like Witten. Yeah. So, he's one of the few consistent tight ends. And sort of consistent at that so to sort of breeze through the rest of the team uh, Isaiah Crowell not a huge fan I think he was overrated uh, Trevor Simeon was a guy who looked good early on you know when the Cowboys were losing to him everyone was ready to crown this guy and he's you know lost his starting job and he's part of a team now that's looking pretty jokish Stefan Diggs has sort of gotten eclipsed by Adam Thielen Jordy Nelson didn't have a quarterback for weeks and weeks, and I think yeah. that pretty much sums up Jackson's team. Yeah. All right. So we have a very interesting team to talk about next, my team. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, my uh, waiver wire thing cleared. I got your boy. You know the tight end pickings are slim when I started with Greg Olson and I've had to pick up your boy Austin Hooper <laughs> multiple times. Just as I have a fucking oh, body God. to start. <laughs> Just a body, man. Yeah, you know it's bad. <laughs> Never forget the time when I needed like less than a point to beat Lillian. I got negative points. You got negative. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. That was so sad. So you have to start with Drew Brees here. He's been pretty underwhelming, not a lot of touchdowns, and after being pretty much like the captain of a Texas Tech-style air it out offense, Drew Brees is now part of a disgusting two-headed running monster, and that means way less production for him. Yeah, it's true. He's had a lot of like around the 10 to 15 range, which is not what you'd expect from a Drew Brees offense. Mm-hmm. But so I got consistent other than that. Yeah, I got pretty Alfred Morris mm -hmm. to capitalize off of Zeke being gone. Unfortunately for me, the Cowboys were horrifically bad and can't actually win without Sean Lee. Yeah. So Alfred didn't do that much. <laughs> then I have Devote, who was both disappointing and concussed. Des Bryant, of a shell of his former self, a complete laughing stock compared to where he is ranked by many. I mean, the dude is a drop machine. If you watch, he can't this, catch the ball. If you watch this guy play, Dak will hit him right in the hands, and he'll drop it. And this is a consistent thing. And I don't know, like I guess that uh, drops in the NFL are sort of like errors in baseball now, where it has to be so obvious and so egregious for it to be counted. Where like Des Bryant has like eight drops, and he's one of the top in the league. But I swear I watch him walk, drop two or three balls every game. Every yeah. game. Did you see last week where yes. it was the, that fade the, route to the left side and uh -huh. he never closed his hands? Yeah, they just stayed right open. Face. Oh, it hit him gosh. right. And the, it got <laughs> so bad. Usually the announcers who were like dick riding him and gassing him up were like, Des Bryant's been having trouble with drops this year. God. And then I have Nelson Iwaguar, who's part of a Philly offense that looks good but is currently winceless. Yep. That's rough. So I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to fix that, as they say. Yeah, I don't know if you can start him with that wins. Oh, I've already changed it. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Crabtree this week. Refresh your Crabtree. page. And uh, Devin Funchess has been a solid pickup for me. Kelvin Benjamin uh, had a good rookie year and then sort of faded into obscurity to the point where he got traded off the Buffalo. Yeah. And Funchess has sort of taken up the reins, which is cute. But at the same time, he's definitely not top tier. Tight ends, I had Greg Olson, who pretty much was out for the entire year very early on. So that was terrible. Yep. Running back-wise, I had LeGarrette Blunt, who pretty much got displaced out of a job after Jay Ajaye was traded over. And remember, it was, it was uh, Sproles and Blunt at the beginning. I had both. It was a workable timeshare. And then Sproles got hurt, and then it was uh, Wendell Smallwood. That was workable. Smallwood. And then, you know, Smallwood got hurt and right, was kind of obscured, and it became that other guy. Clement. Like Clement, and he gets all the fucking touchdowns. And then they yeah. got Jay Ajaye to boot. So, <laughs> so Blunt might as well have been hurt for the year. Yeah, true. James White, really useless unless it's a PPR. PPR lead the only, yeah. only way he's usable. No rushing touchdowns. They just, they you know, they'll pass it out to him, but they're never going to give him a ball in the red zone. Mm -hmm. Chris Hogan was solid, but he got hurt down the stretch when I really needed him. He had a stretch there where he was getting a lot of touchdowns, but, you know, injuries happen, and yep. he sort of just fell off. Steven Goskowski has been top two. The Eagles defense has been pretty damn good. But I think if you look at my team, the main factors are, you know, Drew Brees suddenly gets a running attack. Freeman is disappointing and gets hurt. Yeah. Olsen, severe injury. Des Bryant, shell of what he once was. And, you know, you're just not looking at a very strong team after that. Yeah. Hopefully I can tear it up in the consolation bracket. Yeah, man. And try to finish 8-8 eight and eight with two wins against Sam. So this next guy, this next division is going to go way quicker because there's not as much talent. We have Clap Four, who is very good. I was looking at Clap Four's team at the beginning of the year, and two things jumped out at me: Alvin Kamara, he picked up, and of course has been top five, absolutely god tier, and yep. a huge asset to his team. <coughs> and Robbie Anderson, who is sort of 
the guy who is the reason that the New York Jets have not been jokish and they've just been sort of below average. Anderson, top 10 guy. I don't think you can trust him this week at the Saints, though. I'd expect another two or three point week. Really? Yeah. McCown, uh, he looked so bad last week. They were playing at Denver's defense, though, you know. True. They can do anything, including make Zeke quit. <laughs> yeah. I think Anderson will net at least 10, honestly. Okay. Okay, so Antonio Brown, of course he's good. Jared Cook was top 10 in a, in a season where tight ends really had to get it together. An interesting thing about both of the division-winning Watsons, they had tight ends that weren't considered great in the preseason but ended up being pretty good and consistent due to lack of depth of the position. Yeah. Interesting to me, he has a backup tight end and three defenses. What do you think about this? I did not notice he had three defenses. That's kind of ridiculous. Three. I feel like you. <clears throat> I feel like you'd pick the wrong one every week, just because it's hard to determine who's going to be the best. I think for whatever reason he wants he wants to do Denver this week because they're playing Indy and Indy's going to be yeah. bad. But then in the final week, the Rams and the Pats have easy matchups. So mm. I don't know. Maybe he wants to pick and choose there. With only two weeks, though, I don't know. It's kind of weird to me. That is strange. To me, the story of this team is consistency. Matt Ryan's consistent. Lamar Miller's consistent, even though you know the Texans have had a bad offensive line, defensive injuries, Magic Man went out. But through it all, Lamar Miller's been getting 11 yeah. points every week. That's Lamar Miller's M.O. <laughs> and between Anderson and Chimera, this team is definitely playoff worthy. And to me, Chimera is so explosive and there's enough consistent points and Brown is so explosive. This is a scary team, actually. Yeah, for sure. So uh, the fact that the Kamish managed so well and got Chimera and Anderson is the difference between that team being not very good and being pretty damn good. Yeah. So moving on to Aaron, he has Alex Smith, who, of course, got dumped on him when he was doing absolutely nothing. Of course, the play calling situation has been changed, taken away from Andy Reid, who is a guy who is much more comfortable with a Buffalo Wild Wings menu in his hand than an offensive <laughs> playbook. He oh, sort of man. has Mike Sherman Savage. syndrome, where he just does the opposite of what he's supposed to do. It's just clueless. Of yeah. course, I know the video is running a little long, but I'd love you to just briefly recall that playoff run where the Philadelphia Eagles had like four and a half minutes to score against... Uh, I can't. I think it was a Super Bowl. I can't remember who they were playing, but they mismanaged the clock. And Andy Reid fingerprints were all over that one. <laughs> anyway, DeMarco Murray, 114 points this year. Insanely disappointing. Yeah, Murray, very disappointing. Murray, to me, was one of these guys who I thought was actually going to be decent. McKinnon, yeah, you know, he's gotten some points. He's had a few 20-plus point weeks, but... You gotta remember, Cook was absolutely going in. Dalvin Cook, my dude, I drafted that guy. I remember, and he was doing yeah. great things for you until what he blew his knee out. Is that what happened? Yep. Yep. Yeah, sad days, and ever since then, it's been the McKinnon and Murray show, and that's just one of those tragic situations where a non-timeshare, where there's a definitive guy that's going to get the points, gets turned into mm -hmm. a timeshare, and to me, that makes a position where there's not a lot of depth to begin with even worse. Yeah. And Aaron's team really looks like shit, I think, after you sort of take care of the top players. Hopkins has been good. Hopkins. And again, like Lamar Miller, oddly, he's been someone who's been able to find success despite all the other stuff going on. He's had a lot of touchdowns. Yes, he has. And it seems like any time the Texans do it, like, to me, the t when I watch the Texans, it's like they have a few first downs and they're just not consistent enough and they peter out. Well, yeah. a lot of times when they score, it's on the long, you know, these long plays, and Hopkins is pretty much the only guy who can get that done. Is Lamar Miller's ground and pound, and of course, yep. Deshaun Watson, Magic Man, is hurt. <coughs> Marquise Goodwin, not impressed by this guy at all, and pretty much goes for the rest of Aaron's team. TJ Yeldon, what has he done this year? He's ranked 71. Nothing. Nothing. Emmanuel Sanders, what has he done this year? Nothing. Ranked 55. Sterling Shepard would see. I mean, we're looking at names of players who are on offenses that are historically bad. These are people who are expecting it. Geno Smith 
to throw them the ball. These are people, you know, I don't need to go on and on about this. No. These are bums. These are scrubs. Adrian yep. Peterson, I'm surprised Aaron's still not starting him. You think, you know, I think Aaron actually dropped the bin quote. I'm looking like a fantasy genius for picking up Adrian <laughs> Peterson after that 125 point week and then three. Uh, and then he had 14. It was like maybe, yeah. may, you know, He's maybe. Back. Yeah. Two, three, failed to break 10. Zero. Z yep. Zero. Goose egg. Zero. You're done. Anyway. It's Aaron, over for Peterson. Aaron's team, you know, Delaney Walker is decent. Other than that, like, there's just nothing here, really. Yeah. Uh, interesting thing about Aaron, I always feel like he drafts pretty well, but always sort of manages poorly down the stretch. With that trade, he just sent to Spencer another indication that of poor management. I mean, th that can pretty much be summed up by this thread <coughs> where Aaron says, I, well, like, he's, all, he's blaming, like, everyone else in the league, like, <laughs> As though, like, people not seeing this obscure trade after it's pretty much the season is over. He's like, well, yeah. it's your guys' fault. I sent Spencer a trade I had no interest in him accepting. And uh, that was really stupid, Aaron. Yeah, stupid. So we'll briefly talk about no fried. To me, the only thing that needs to be mentioned really is David Johnson, you know. He got hurt and that was it. That's about it. Alshon Jeffrey has been okay. They really spread the ball around between Ertz and Iaguar. Duke Johnson is a Brown. He splits time with Crowell. Brady's been good, sure, but not God tier huge numbers, Brady. Randall Cobb's been bad in an offense where, you know, Aaron Rodgers has been hurt. Jamison Crowder has been part of an offense that's been a little disappointing, I would say, if, if you were expecting the Redskins to win 10, 11 games. Yep. Kelsey's been the best tight end in the league, you know, with Gronk missing his a few games. Amari Cooper continues to be the guy who draws safety help while Crabtree catches all the touchdowns. Gano is good, but overall this team is full of gaping holes. I said at the beginning of the year he needed to trade to address running back issues, especially once David Johnson got hurt. He never did. He was never really that active with doing trades or trying to fix holes in his team, and it shows. Oh. Alrighty, and Ben's team here, which there's not much to look at. He has Jordan Howard, who he expected to be a number one guy. Jordan Howard squeaks into the top ten here, but he's Just not barely. hes not a haymaker. He's a consistent back, which is important, but if you look at the rest of Ben's team, Cooper Cup, like a tier B receiver, even though the Rams have looked good, Cooper Cup hasn't really been the guy to reel in the touchdowns. Interesting little story. I actually tried to trade for Cooper Cup, but Ben wasn't having it. Mm. Will Fuller was a guy that I had at the beginning of the year, but it was like, oh yeah, broken collarbone. And then he was like freaking back by week four and looked god tier. But once Magic Man started to, you know, obviously Magic Man got hurt, Will Fuller's yep. production dropped off to zero. Hunter Henry doesn't really have talent. He'll catch the odd touchdown every other week, but, you know, he's top 10. That shows you how bad tight end pool has sure. been. Yep. Also, San Diego Chargers, like I said, Phil Rivers has improved a lot. And Ben's bench is a complete laughing stock. Between Cam I love the Panthers, as you know, but Cam Newton and Christian McCaffrey, like McCaffrey's a huge part of that offense and only has 117 fantasy points. They always try to get this guy the ball, but he's more of a PPR guy, I would say. Yeah, yep, I'd agree with that. Cam Newton, despite the fact he's a running quarterback, a lot of times lacks to put up numbers some weeks. He's sort of a weird player. Overall, this makes perfect sense why this is a last place team. Okay, so getting that out of the way, we got you. Let's Kirk, go. Kirk Cousins, consistent. LaShawn McCoy and Fournette, both over 160. That is a huge, huge factor. If you're going into the playoffs and both of your running backs are healthy and have over 160 points, you have done something right. Yep. A lot of people were predicting Fournette to have health issues, myself included. You know, he was out a couple weeks, but those didn't really rear their ugly head. Mm -hmm. He was so explosive that it didn't really matter. Michael Thomas, he has emerged. Hold up, hold up. I want to say something it, about yeah. LaShawn McCoy. Go for it, yeah. Remember yeah. when you had Spencer on and he said he was a bust? <laughs> oh, I, Spencer. I just want to say, what is he ranked? Six? He's eight? eight. Uh, okay, eight. I, I drafted him seven. I don't think that's a bust, right? Not a bust. I may be, I may be new to this game. He might which be I'm new. Not, but he's not new. <laughs> 
Not a bust. Not a bust. Thank you, Spencer. And LaShawn McCoy, I know what Spencer was talking about. Maybe like it took him a long time to punch it in. I mean, we're yeah. talking until week 11 before this guy got it in the end zone. Well, that's receiving-wise. But, you know, five weeks of no rushing touchdowns is a little scary, I would say. But definitely not a bust. You know, LaShawn yeah. McCoy has been solid. And I think he has actually shed that uh, injury, injury-ridden injury player yeah, I think label he has. that he had. I think now he's been consistently healthy enough to where you don't draft LaShawn McCoy saying, like, well, he's going to get hurt. That's just a given. But, uh, you know. No, it's not really like that. And he's a huge part of the Buffalo offense, and he stayed healthy. So I would say LaShawn McCoy, his stock has moved up, whereas uh, David Johnson, DeMarco Murray, players like this, their stock has sort of fallen. Golden Tate, not a huge fan of, but I would say that he's a solid tier B type guy. I don't I don't love him. He's, he's better in a PPR. They target him a lot, like short yardage. And I, I really wouldn't want to start him this week with Stafford still, like, hurt. I think his finger's still bothering him. But I really don't have anything else on the bench at wide receiver. I think I have to start him. I feel you. So here we see that Michael Thomas, even though that the Saints run it a lot more and they spread it around, he's sort of that dude when it comes to their passing attack. And they have such a good offense that he manages to get, you know, decent yards every week. Yeah. He, he's not a world beater, but he's definitely consistent. Yeah. Eric Ebron, to me, I don't like I get your thoughts on this, but to me, he's just like, oh, there's not a lot in the way of tight ends. What do you think? No, nah, he's he's not much. I'm, I'm honestly just hoping for four to five points with the chance of a touchdown. Nice. So this Drake guy, obviously, is taking over for Ajayi. He looks decent, and he has a good Roll matchup. Roll Tide. There you have it. Wolf Fultz has been solid, you know, of course the Saints, no matter, Wolf Fultz has sort of profited off the fact that the Saints are going to score, might not be through Breeze, but they're going to score. Yeah. And honestly, I don't even think Fultz is that good of a kicker talent-wise, but he gets so many opportunities that it sort of works out. Mm-hmm. So this team is solid. To me, I always try to build my team around running backs, didn't really do it that much this year, but the metagame has sort of changed where it's hard to do that. But I mm-hmm. think that's the most consistent, best way to play, and I think you've really knocked it out of the park this season with your two running yeah. backs. Yeah, and I even have another guy on the bench, Alex Collins, that's probably going to get 12 to 15 points this week. I think I've got four running backs that are good for 12 to 15, and I can just start three. All righty. So let's move on to Spencer. Now, your 12 and 2 best record, he's 10 and 4 wild card. And Spencer has been very outspoken about these supposed free wins that you've been gifted, which I just love the fact that y'all are facing off heads up in the playoffs opening week. Yeah. Gives him a chance to really just sort of put all that behind him, make up for yeah. it, and take a victory. But if we look at Spencer's team, he's just going with Philly all the way. He's got Nick Foles, who's backing up old Wincy. Now, it's interesting to me that somehow this season Nick Foles has two fumbles lost. I don't even know how the hell that's possible. He's less than 100 yards. But uh, that's sort of sort of weird. But to go with another Philly Eagle, consider that many other people in this league are rostering a backup quarterback. There's not a lot of choices. Of course, no one would have Nick Foles with Wentz being healthy and doing yeah. so well. And they're playing the Giants. So I would say this is a good move by Spence. He's got Kerwin Williams, which uh, not a huge, huge fan of. And Jamal Williams, who I'm, uh, well, not a huge fan of. A.J. Green is pretty damn well, with good. Aaron Rodgers is coming back this week, so I think they give the ball, uh, or they don't give Jamal Williams the ball as, as much as they've been giving him the ball. That's true. I think Jordy Nelson, who Spencer dropped and is currently on Jackson's team, is probably going to have a touchdown this week. Yep, I can see that. Now, A.J. Green is really good, but if I'm just looking at the top of this team, I'm sort of saying, like, well, Spencer's 10-4, and four, but compared to the top four of your team, like, how does how is he going to win? I, I really don't know if he can this week. He, he needs a monster game from A.J. Green, which against Minnesota, I don't think it's going to happen. Washington's rush defense is about average, maybe above average. Kerwin Williams needs a big game. We need to see that old Nick Foles 
Remember when we thought Nick Foles was really good? We oh, got to yeah. see him. And he's he's starting D.D. Westbrook, which is kind of surprising. I thought he'd start Josh Gordon. I think he's low on Houston's defense. Low on Houston's defense, and Gordon is playing his defense, the Ravens, that he's starting. So I guess he's um, putting it all on the Ravens' defense, hoping that Gordon won't do anything. It's interesting to me that Brandon Cooks gets the bench here. Of course, that has to do with Hogan coming back. And Zach Ertz has been good and is facing off against the Giants. So let, let's just, I, now that we've reviewed your teams back to back, let's just straight up go into the preview of that matchup. Yeah. All right, we have you versus Spencer. Now, Cousins versus Foles. Here's the thing. Foles isn't as good as Wentz, but I'm actually going to predict that Foles is going to have a big week. Now, really? Yeah. Now, whether, not like huge, but whether you win or lose is going to be dependent on if he hooks up with Zach Ertz. Now, it's interesting. Zach Ertz has been a part of the team for longer than, you know, like Alshon Jeffrey or Iaguar. Back when yeah. Foles was doing his thing, it was the Deshaun Jackson, Jeremy Macklin show. So I think that Foles has some rapport with Ertz. And if Ertz can catch a touchdown, and especially if Ertz can get over 80 yards, I think yeah. you're in for it. Because That'll while, be big. Well, I'm not a huge fan of discount double points. In this specific scenario, I think it's really the one thing you have to watch out for to lose. Because I edge Weston huge, huge in the running backs. We're talking Miami and Houston. We're talking two guys who have over 160. And on Spencer's side, it's a guy who has only recently been good on an offense that's pass first when their quarterback's mm -hmm. coming back. And, you know, the Packers have a decent record. They're going to look to pass first and try to win. And then Williams yeah. on Arizona, he's been decent, but he's not great. Definitely worse than McCoy. A.J. Green, he's playing up in cold-ass Minnesota on an offense that isn't great, although I do edge him over Golden Tate. What do you think about that matchup? Though I give A.J. Green the, the slight edge. I say slight because Minnesota's defense is very, very good, and it's at Minnesota. So I don't see A.J. Green having a huge week. I think it's interesting that Spencer uh, has this D.D. Westbrook pick betting against Houston's defense. Of course, they're playing uh, in Jacksonville. But Thomas is playing the Jets. I think Thomas is going to get over 12 this week, and I give yeah. Thomas the edge. Yeah, I think he lights him up this week. I honestly think Zach Ertz will get a touchdown. Now, whether or not he beats you will be more to do with whether it's two touchdowns and a lot of yards or yeah. just, you know, 20 yards and a touchdown. But I edge Ertz. I think that Drake is due for a big week. Carlos Hyde is sort of, you know, 49ers answer to Lamar Miller. Just a consistent yeah. 10 points a week guy that has and the Titan, talent. Titans rush defense has been pretty solid the last few weeks, so I don't expect much from Hyde either. Greg Zaline, we're playing Seattle in Seattle, so I wouldn't expect them to go off. The Ravens defense is playing Cleveland, and as far as your special teams goes, Will Lutz looks to have a big day, so I give him the kicker advantage, yeah. uh, Will Lutz. And the Bears are playing Detroit, so I'm going to give Spencer the defense advantage, and overall I'm going to edge to you, maybe, yeah. maybe like 15-point advantage, although I expect this to be a decent game. An interesting factor in this matchup is, unfortunately for Spencer, what he has only two players playing at home, and usually you don't have as big a games on the road. It's just a lot of road matchups for his players. True. Do you have any interest in plugging in Juju Smith-Schuster? Is that a possibility? <laughs> I, right now, probably stick with Tate, but I may plug in Juju Smith-Schuster because the Patriots' <coughs> pass defense has been lackluster in the past couple weeks. All right, and final question to you regarding this matchup. You went after my sloppy seconds, Greg Olson. He's been absolutely terrible. Even whenever they're like, oh, he's going to come back. It's like, yeah. uh, no. So One gonna, catch for 10 yards. Are you going to roll the dice with Olsen? He's yet to break two this year. No, there's not a chance I'm playing Olsen. He's got to prove it before I can play him. So if he has a decent game this week, maybe if I win, I play him next week. But no chance I play him this week. All right. In under two minutes, let's talk about Bing Bong to Electric Boogaloo and Victoria's Secret just to address them. All right. Funny how Cameron auto-drafted Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon, again, had a really good year, and it wasn't enough. To me, every single year, 
whether he shows up to the draft or not, Cameron somehow manages to have a worse team in the middle in the middle of the year and going on than he does at the beginning. Do you think this is yep. true? Yes. He should have had seven or eight wins if he just sets his lineup, too. Wow. And that's not even, like, making crazy moves or trades. That's just setting the lineup? That's just setting, pulling the guy out with a bye and putting somebody in that plays. All righty. You hear that, Cameron? It's time to check your team, buddy. Check your team. And as far as C. Gauch's team goes, I mean, this is C. Gauch's team. He drafts insanely top-heavy, and one of his players got hurt. This is what it looks like when you draft like that, and it doesn't work out. Yep. Of course, Rob Kelly got hurt. Rob Kelly likes to run his mouth more than he runs on the field. Absolutely terrible player. Yeah, not good. All right, so we've addressed that. Let's move on to the matchups. We've already done yours. Let's do the Watson Bowl. Starry Knights versus Clap for. Dak is playing Oakland. I think it will go well. Matt Ryan's playing Tampa Bay. That will also go well. I'm going to actually edge Dak here. I would edge Dak, too. I don't like Matt Ryan at all. Alrighty. Mark Ingram's playing the bad Jets. Expect him to have over 15. Lamar Miller is playing in Jacksonville. I don't think Houston's going to do very well. I do expect Lamar Miller to get 10. I'm going to edge Ingram. Yeah. Todd Gurley versus Chimera. Pretty much these were the carry players on both of these teams. Chimera, pretty damn good playing the Jets. Kind of interesting that both of the Saints attacks are mirrored here. I'm going to edge Gurley here, though, because he's been so I would, prolific. I would edge Kamara in this against the bad Jets because Gurley's playing Seattle in Seattle, and I feel like he could be in for a bust of a game sure. for, for, for Gurley's standards. He's not going to go for, like, under 10, I think, but around 10 to 15, not, not a great game for Gurley, but I don't think he's edging 20. All right, I would predict it at like a 17, and I think Chimera might get like 16. I think it'll be real close. Yeah. Kenny Stills versus Buffalo. Okay, but you know, Antonio Brown's on the other side of the equation, so Edge Brown, obviously. Yeah. Thielen's been great. We spoke about him earlier. I'm going to Edge Thielen over Robbie Anderson. Yep. Both of them have decent matchups. Kyle Rudolph, Jared Cook. Imagine Cook. Uh, Dallas's pass defense isn't very good. What do you think? I'd probably, I'd probably edge Rudolph slightly because he's had a lot of touchdown targets uh, recently. And I, I don't think Jared Cook's a good player. I just don't think he can play. But Dallas pass defense, iffy. So he may get a touchdown. I don't like the erratic at all. Even though Gore didn't practice, I'm under the impression that anyone who can get plugged in is going to outperform Reddick. Uh, I don't know. They've been using him in the in the passing game, and he may. I mean, they had that uh, Mir Abdullah guy. And they may have passed him up. Riddick may be the number one back. All right. So I'd I'd give Riddick the edge, and Frank Gore, he's old, but he's still getting it done. But also playing Denver defense, who looked really good last week. It's true. They looked as good last week as they looked in week two. <laughs> Overall, I would say that this is the commissioner's game to lose. I give him the advantage. Uh, overall, I'd probably say you're right. I think uh, Clap 4 should win this, but I think it'll be down to the wire. Yeah, I think this will be a really good close game. Yeah. All right, Kareem Hunt is a bust versus Aaron. Alex Smith and Russell by Jimmy's Wilson. Obviously, Wilson gets the edge there. Even with the new play calling, you know, Russell Wilson likes to run, and that pretty much does it. I think that DeMarco Murray will outperform Lynch. What do you think? Um, I would say Murray outperforms him, but just barely. I don't love uh, Dallas's rush defense, but with Sean Lee, it's a lot better. Yeah. So I'd give Murray the slight edge. But looking at this team, I almost give the edge to every position to Kareem Hunt as a bust. I agree. Uh, Kareem Hunt, obviously, himself is better than McKinnon. Julio's mm -hmm. miles ahead of Goodwin. Fitz and Hopkins. Hopkins has had better numbers, but Fitz has the better matchup, and Fitz has been top 15. Much better matchup. 
Yeah, and like, you have to remember Hopkins, even though he's been good all year, you have to consider his quarterback situation. Yep. And at, at Jacksonville, nobody's done anything. Yeah, and, and Evan Ingram, I would say, is due for a bad week. Philly really has something to prove. And they the Giants can't do anything on offense anyway. And yeah. Tucker versus Cleveland, enough said. Cowboys defense isn't great. You know, the Dolphins are playing in snowy ass Buffalo, so Cream Hunt I think is gonna win this game, Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna win going away. And to wrap things up for this long, incredibly entertaining video, we have <laughs> Lemon Dogs versus the new guys. Drew Brees should have a great week against the Jets. Kansas City has looked terrific too. Who do you think? I like I like Philip Rivers because he's been playing out of his mind and they've been blowing teams out. He's getting 20 points at halftime and just running the ball to backups, backup running backs the rest of the game. <clears throat> so I like the Saints to depend on their top running backs and not use Brees quite as much. So I give Rivers the edge. All right. Alfred Morris versus Coleman, two guys who were second string going into the beginning of the season. I think you definitely have to edge Coleman here against a bad team. Uh, I think Coleman's on the concussion protocol. Oh, yeah, I forgot he got concussed. Yeah, so I would say probably edge Morris just for the fact that Coleman could play a little less or maybe not be used as much. Yeah, I completely forgot about that, dude, because usually, like, I don't know. I thought, why wouldn't it say DNP? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Freeman obviously is better than Henry, I would say. Yeah, especially if Coleman's limited. If Coleman's limited, that helps you a lot. Mm -hmm. Dez versus Keenan. Dez is a fucking laughing stock. I mean, when was the last time the guy got over 100 yards? He's more likely to drop a ball than he is to yeah. catch it. And the, the whole, like, De what's funny is, like, the whole Dez caught it meme. Like, it, it's almost like... It's almost like giving Rugi Odor the benefit of the doubt when it comes to like balls and strikes. It's, oh, like, it's like, well, you swing at everything. Like, what do you mean you caught? You, you know, what do you mean it was a ball and he got called strike three? It's like, Des, you freaking drop everything, even the easy <laughs> passes. Like, are we supposed to really give you the benefit of the doubt when you're rolling around on the ground like that? No, Advantage, it's hard Alan. To. Yes. Uh, Evans versus Funchess. I'm actually going to give Funchess the advantage here. I think so, too. Evans hadn't been himself. Cooper versus or Hooper versus Gronk. Cooper's your boy. You're gonna put him over Gronk. <laughs> I'll give Hooper the edge to score over one point. Nice. Okay. If only he could have done that versus Lily. <laughs> All righty. And then of course Gus Galsy is gonna outperform. Suck up. And in terms of flex, I think Hill is just gonna destroy Crabtree. Crabtree's been so disappointing between the suspension and the uselessness. But yeah. between the new play calling, I think Hill's going to pop off next week. Yeah, I, yeah, for sure. The Jags defense is going to pop off too. I really think it's going to be hard for me to win. Yeah, I would give – well, new guys are number one scoring team in the league, so I think I have to give them the edge. Plus, I like the Chargers matchup. At Kansas City, has been tough historically to play at, but I think his – Discount double points is going to come in for him. Yeah, in my opinion, like, you have to consider on my team, there's players like Freeman who have pretty much been underperforming all year. And if, like, if Coleman doesn't play, that's really, I think, my only chance to win. Yeah. Because it's this weird situation where it's because it's a mirror matchup. If Coleman's out, then Freeman suddenly becomes like old Freeman, I would say, just yeah. because it touches. So, yeah. so Weston, we're going to wrap the video up. It was a great episode. Is there any anything you want to yeah. say before the playoffs begin? Any maybe like a Super Bowl prediction or something? All right. So y'all can look out for my power rankings. I'm going to post them later this, this afternoon. But right now I have um, Spencer and I rated as basically a tie for the best two teams. And then I have... Clap four rated a little higher than Starry. And so my prediction is that I I play Clap Four in the championship. And at that point, I hate to predict a championship for myself, but I'm gonna do it. I think I've got the running backs to do it. You've and so hopefully back. I didn't just jink myself, but I think it's gonna happen. Alrighty, and on that note, I'm going to end the video. Make sure you leave a like rating and a comment. <laughs>